How's it going? My name is Justin Wiggins. I work for the Connecticut DP Fisheries Division. Uh, we are out here at Fort Trumbull State Park in New London today. It's on the beautiful Thames River. And we're going to give you some pointers for fishing off piers or the shoreline of Connecticut. Uh, one of the nice things about Fort Trumbull is an enhanced shore fishing area, so there's reduced length limits on keeping summer flounder, also known as fluke, and porgies. All right, so we're gonna move around a little bit and, and go over some of the tactics and gear you could use if you're out here fishing in one of our saltwater piers on the Connecticut coastline. For fishing off saltwater piers, you want a rod that's a little bit heavier than freshwater. So this is like a seven and a half foot rod it's medium, medium heavy action. I got 15 to 20 pound line on here and a uh, little uh, medium sized reel. So um, nothing too big. You don't want your trout rod out here, but uh, this is perfect for, for fishing off the piers. One of my absolute favorite methods is to throw small metal lures. So this is a deadly dick. Show a little picture here. There's a variety of small metal lures that you could use. You can catch bluefish, striped bass, uh, false albacore in the fall time, hickory shad. You could jig them up and down in, from, the, from the pier and catch porgies and sea rabbits and all kinds of stuff. Or you could cast them out. in quickly, skipping across the surface, and all sorts of predator fish think they're a, uh, a bait fish scurrying from them. You catch all sorts of stuff. Now, one lure I would not leave home without. So let's move around. We'll cover a, a few other options that you can use out here. Okay, I got a high-low rig here. Got a small sinker. It's one ounce here because there's very little current. And I have two hooks on it, both baited with squid. And sometimes when you get into schools of porgies, you can catch two at the same time. They, uh, they tend to run in schools also. On this rod here, I've got a single hook with a small piece of sandworm, I think. They've been, they've been eating the sand, they took the sandworm off. But I have a smaller hook there. Uh, this, this is a, a normal porgy rig. Um, you don't tend to want a really large hook for porgies because um, they you know you have a harder time hooking them with a bigger hook. That's a perfect size hook for porgies. It'll also work for most sea bass. Uh, if you're out in a boat fishing and getting into the bigger schools of sea bass, you'll want a bigger hook than this. All right, so one of the very best ways to catch fluke out here uh, along the uh, pier and just fishing the shoreline is with a bucktail jig. It's just a, a heavy weighted jig with a skirt. And you usually tip this with something. You could use like Berkeley Gulp. You could use a strip of squid. We've been catching a bunch of sea robins. I love fresh sea robin or bluefish strips from their belly. So I just cut a nice fresh strip of meat. Here's the bucktail. And all you gotta do, cast this out. And flounder and fluke, they fluke, they live on the bottom. So you let it sink down to the bottom a little bit. Once it hits bottom, you just jig it slowly back. So it's bouncing along the bottom. Very productive, very productive method for fluking. So uh, I'm here, I got a, uh, the tail end of a, a bunker for Menhaden. Um, I'm gonna go for, I'm going for bluefish right now. So I've got the tail, I've got a circle hook. I've got a, what's called a fish finder rig, which is a, um, I got a barrel swivel here. And then I have this rig that slides up and down along the line. So. When I cast out, the fish can grab the bait, start swimming away. It doesn't feel any weight. Um, and I'll, I'll hear my rod zipping away. Cast out. We're getting a lot of bites. Okay. Put another, um... Let it sink to the bottom. So now I'll tighten it up. Put the rod in the rod holder. And I'm going to loosen the bale a lot. So if some fish comes along, it can easily pull line off. And uh, while I'm doing that, I think I'll do some, uh, I'll cast for some little uh, little bluefish called snapper blues. All right, so uh, this is called a, a snapper popper. And um, if you can see on here, there's a, a float with a weight inside it. And then there's a convex 
area here and when you pull it through the water it shoots water out over making a disturbance on the surface uh, when there's a blitz or a whole bunch of bluefish in the area they'll uh, they'll be chasing a smaller fish up to the surface and uh, that makes splashes in the water so making splashes in the water with this kind of represents uh, like a mini blitz and on that is a number six hook and a piece of surgical tubing and then I put a little I tipped it with a little bit of squid just to entice the snapper bluefish uh, to hit and snapper blues are um, the young young of the year bluefish and they're about six seven inches long so how this works it's a very active way to fish you uh, cast out and immediately start uh, retrieving so we cast out and then I'm gonna pop the I'm gonna pop my the end of the rod so it jerks the the snapper popper and hopefully it attracts fish and they come up and hit that little piece of squid and surgical tubing all right so good method for catching snapper bluefish in august and september and hickory shad is throwing small little metal lures so this is a very small cast master here very small at all again all you do with this you want a lighter rod for this like a trout rod freshwater rod Cast it out and just reel in. Keep casting a reel until those hickory shed snapper blues come around. So, great way to introduce kids to fishing out here is using live bait. So, either a piece of squid or a piece of sandworm in this case on a number four hook, a short leader, and a little a little weight and a three way swivel. And you just want to put this on the bottom. So, I got my nephew out here, Logan. Could you show? And for this for this setup, you could catch porgies, and there would be sea bass, blackfish, cunners, uh, sea robins, all sorts of fish are gonna eat this kind of stuff. So, Lo, can you show us exactly how what you would do from here? So, all you have to do is press this button, wait till it hits the bottom, crank it, and then you wait till you have a fish. I'm using a uh, piece of squid and I like the tentacles because I can put it on the hook like a like a worm and then it's a little bit harder for them to steal it on me but they're still doing it and then the hook goes to a three-way swivel and the weight holds it down on the bottom and I keep moving it slowly until I get a bite and when the fish bites then I stop there and they steal the bait and everything. <laughs> Uh, what kind of fish are you trying to catch? I'm trying to catch a porgy, or some people call them scup, or a sea robin, or a flounder, and some people call them fluke. A lot of people are using it. It's got the small weight on it, and I'm using about an inch and a half piece of sandworm, just dropping it on the bottom. And I'm holding the pole instead of leaving it in there, and then when I feel a little tug, I just tug back. And so far, we got lucky. What, try, what kind of fish are you trying to catch? I'm trying to get more porgies. I'm using is I'm just jigging off the bottom here and what I've done is just take one of the tentacles one of the tentacles from a piece of squid and I put it on the hook like this and it gives a really great action when you're jigging this weight up and down on the bottom so when you're fishing off of a pier if you just you don't even have to cast because the structure of the pier all the pilings and stuff that's where fish like to hang out so on this type of a reel you just push the button you let it go when the line stops moving you know you hit the bottom Right now it's about 25 feet deep here. You click it over and then you just gently jig up and down so that that tip is moving. And that little piece of squid down there is gonna be there, have a lot of action on it. 
and it's gonna look like a little minnow. And as I was reeling up that last last time I had it there, a hickory shad came and hit it, but I missed the setting the hook on it, and that was that. So if you can see that, I don't know if you can see it in the water dancing, but it does dance pretty nice. That little white piece of squid. So I'm back down to the bottom. I just jig, jig, jig. Uh, I just caught a puffer fish like this, which is pretty cool. The kids have that in, in the touch tank. Uh, it's, it's always amazing what you can catch here. Uh, just having some fun. So all I'm doing, drop to the bottom, jigging a little bit, and we'll see what we get.